What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet moveset guide. Obviously earlier today we did cover Ledge, and today we are covering Armor Rouge. Well, not today, two hours later, maybe an hour and a half. I'll figure it out. I don't know what my upload schedule is for this weekend with like more than one upload, but yeah. Uh, so Armor Rogue, I'm going to say Rogue. I'm going to try to keep it consistent. Sometimes I say Rouge. No, it's Rouge. I'm going to say Rouge. Okay, Armor Rouge. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I'm being annoying, but uh, Armor Rouge is actually like not a bad Pokemon. Between it and Ledge, I would say this is actually the superior one, uh, for VGC at least. Now, you might be wondering why I believe that. Well, taking a look at its stats, we can actually figure that out pretty easily. Uh, it's got 85 HP, 60 attack, 100 defense, 125 special attack, 80 special defense, 75 speed, and it is a psychic and fire type with access to Trick Room and Expanding Force. Now. I know what you're thinking. You know, Moxie boosted. Are you gonna run a slow one of these? Yes, I am. But before we get into that, I do have to say, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Scarlet and Violet content. Uh, but yeah, let's 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 continue. So yeah, the stat wise, this thing's pretty decent. It's got like really, really good bulk. Uh, generally speaking with VGC, you want to have a nice balance of bulk and offensive potential when it comes to making a mon work. Well, I guess it depends. They can be a glass cannon like Regieleki and just absolutely tear up the metagame. Uh, but generally speaking, the bulkier but like offensive Pokemon tend to do well. Uh, you can't like go too far into bulk with have with having like no offensive potential. Like you end up just being kind of bad in a lot of cases unless you're named Ferrothorn. Uh, but yeah, this guy's got exactly that. Uh, and it is one of the few Pokemon that still has access to Expanding Force. So Expanding Force, if you don't know, is a move from Generation 8 that was added in the Isle of Armor DLC. Because it was added as a tutor, many Pokemon don't naturally learn it except for things that had their movesets updated in Gen 9 to gain it. Now, Expanding Force hits both the targets when Psychic Terrain is up, otherwise it's a single target move. And when Psychic Terrain is up, it gets a 50% boost in power, so it's a really good wall breaking move. Coming off a 125 base special attack with, you know, the potential to terastalize into a, a Psychic type to get an adaptability boost and putting a Life Orb on this thing, it's a really, really hard move to switch into. Uh, so yeah, like you just don't want to. Uh, this thing, I would say, uh, while I usually, I guess let's just get into the moveset, you know, the first moveset. Uh, this thing is going to be running max HP, 4 defense, 252 special attack with 0 speed IVs and 0 attack IVs. Um, while it is quite defensive, you want to make sure you have 0 attack IVs because foul play is a very common move in VGC. It uses your own attack set against you and since you are a psychic type, that is super effective. So minimizing that damage is optimal. Obviously, you know, you don't have to, but definitely want 0 speed IVs to make sure you can be as trick roomy as possible. 75 speed, while it is decent as far as speed tiers go, um, you're going to be under speeding a lot of important Pokemon with that. So Trick Room is really decent on this thing if it has no speed investment. Uh, but yeah, normally I would say for this sort of Pokemon, you would want to run safety goggles on it to make sure it's safe in the face of uh, in the face of something like a Moongus from putting it to sleep. However, I would say that you're running this thing usually next to Ndidi anyways, which is either going to follow me away that uh, Spore or have safety goggles and follow me away the Spore, making it so it's just like, a useless move versus it. Uh, safety goggles is a really good item on Ndidi, if you didn't know. But yeah, uh, putting this thing next to Ndidi is very scary because what you can do that turn one is set up uh, Psychic Terrain, making it so that your opponent can't fake out either of your Pokemon. And then on the next turn, you guarantee Trick Room by going for Follow Me into Trick Room with the Armor Rouge. And then from that point on, because you are a Life Orb Armor Rouge in Psychic Terrain, you can go ahead and Terastalize into Psychic type, have your Ndidi helping hand the next attack that's about to come out, and then hit him with one of the most powerful expanding forces possible in the game. This thing's gonna be a menace. As for the rest of the moveset, uh, you can run either like Protect or Will-O-Wisp, depending on your uh, preference. I think Will-O-Wisp is quite good for beating a slow Trick Room out, uh, offensive Pokemon. Uh, but as for your like fire move, Heat Wave isn't bad because it's another spread move. Uh, however, if you don't want to get locked into spread moves, like in case your opponent has Wide Guard, this thing does have an exclusive move in Armor Cannon, uh, which is going to basically be a special fire type close combat. You hit him with 120 base power, 100% accurate fire type move, uh, and it's going to lower your defense and special defense stage by one. Uh, this is going to be really good for just annihilating Amoongus, but to be honest, that expanding force is going to do the job anyways. 
However, uh, beating like slow steel type Pokemon is also quite good. If you're facing like a Ferrothorn or like a, a Corviknight, uh, that's gonna be like really decent just for breaking those in one hit. Because once again, Life Orb, 125 base special attack, you can even Terrastalize into Fire if you want. It's a very powerful Pokemon. I think it's quite good. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be my Trick Room offensive set. However, that's not the set I'm probably gonna run day one. This thing, while it only has 75 speed, it is like a decently fast speed tier where you can invest just a little bit and get a lot of reward out of it. So the next moveset is going to be my support offense moveset. This one is running safety goggles. I think this one is pretty necessary, uh, but we're going to be running the flash fire ability or weak armor, your preference. I think flash fire is better on this guy because you don't really want defense drops for the most part. Uh, but it also has access to mystical fire, which is a uh, special fire type move that is 75 base power, 100% accurate. 16 pp maximum so that you can spam it a decent amount uh, and it guarantees to lower the target's special attack stage by one when you combine that with the fact that you have access to will-o-wisp this thing can start just shutting down offensive pokemon you see like a terastalized special attacker smack it with a mystical fire damage down you eat the hit smack it again damage down you see a terastalized physical attacker you burn it instant half uh, attack stat pretty much. Well, you cut the power of their moves by half. That is very important. Um, and combined with your like pretty decent bulk, uh, it's gonna be very easy to survive those hits from that point on. You could even run leftovers if you really want. Leftovers is also quite a good item, but I think safety goggles is better for making sure you don't get uh, redirected or put to sleep by uh, powder Pokemon. As for the rest of the moveset, uh, I think that Expanding Force is going to be your best Psychic move generally. Uh, even if you're not running Psychic Terrain on the team, Expanding Force is still like a decently powerful move at 80 base power uh, that will allow you to take advantage of opponent's Psychic Terrain if they decide to go for it. As for other Psychic moves you could run, uh, I guess it gets Psychic, which is pretty decent. Uh, and you could also run Psy Shock. Those are options, but I, I do still think that Expanding Force is generally the best. And for the final move, I think you can either run Protect or Taunt. I'm running Taunt because um, it is it is like a Pokemon that can be decently fast. You can shut down opposing Trick Room. You can shut down opposing Pokemon that want to go for like Spore, or Rage Powder, or whatever. And that's quite good. As for the EV spread, we're running 252 HP, 164 Special Attack with a Modest Nature. And we're running 92 Speed on this thing. Because at 92 Speed at level 50, you hit 107 Speed. That's going to be like your golden benchmark in this game. That's what I like to call it, golden benchmark. Uh at least as far as speed goes, because in Generation 7, uh, if you wanted to outspeed Tapu Koko under Tailwind or plus one, uh, you would hit like certain speed tiers. For Tailwind, you would need to be 101 base speed to outspeed Tapu Koko. Now Dragapult exists without speed, which outspeeds that and is in Scarlet and Violet. So if you want to outspeed Dragapult, which is the fastest relevant thing in this format, you're going to want to hit 107. And 92 speed with a modest nature hits 107 for this guy. So that's going to be the point of that. But yeah, uh, rather than maxing out special attack, we max out HP on this thing because uh, you just want as much bulk as possible. And this thing isn't really meant to pick up KOs with this set. But I think it's quite good. I think it's going to be like the sort of Pokemon that you won't realize is annoying until you start facing it. Obviously, it is weak to like Earthquake. Uh, it is weak to Rock Slide. That's something you have to consider. However, you know, you're bulky. You can burn those attackers and you'll probably be fine. The next moveset is what I like to call my fun moveset. Uh, for this one, I wouldn't call it fun so much as I would call it dumb. Don't run this, but you can if you think it's funny. This is going to be the one for the people who just want to have fun on the ladder. We're running Leftovers and Flash Fire. Uh, we don't want... Uh, we don't want weak armor on this one because we want to make sure that we're eating as many hits as possible. And this thing has access to iron defense. So we're running max HP for defense, 252 special uh, defense with Calm Mind to boost our special defense and special attack stat at the same time. Expanding Force to take advantage of opposing Psychic Terrain if you really want to. Or you can even run this next to Indeedy and just like follow me and spam these setup moves. Go ahead and do that, yeah. Uh, Heat Wave so we can hit both opponents, but you could also run Mystical Fire if you really want to. Uh, to make it even harder to KO you. And your last move is going to be Iron Defense. So the whole point of this set is just to become an unkillable tank and just KO things. It is it is a funny little guy. He is just a funny little dude who likes his best friend in Didi and will uh, take KOs from the most bulky Pokemon. And of course, you could also, once you get up to like plus six special attack, special defense, you know, terrestrialize into a Psychic or a Fire type, whichever one you prefer. But yeah, I wouldn't call this a good moveset. I'd call it one of my fun movesets. So yeah, that's going to be my thoughts on Armor Rouge. Uh, I think it is actually going to be really decent, and I feel bad that I played Violet as my, like, main copy, so I'm going to have to actually get, like, an... I'm going to have to get, like, the item traded to me to get Armor Rouge, I believe. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think about this Pokemon in the comment section down below. Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? How would you run it? You know, 
just your thoughts. Uh, and yeah, leave a like, subscribe, and then I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.